I looked at this particular laptop all the way back in May when we were at Computex and I couldn't wait to get my hands on it. We have got a Ryzen based laptop sporting a full fat 1700 Ryzen 7, 24 gigabytes of DDR4 as well as an RX 580 with a FreeSync panel. So I think in terms of bang for buck and performance and portability, this is, this is gonna be a package that seems to have all of it. So the Ryzen 7 1700 is AMD's first CPU in the eight core lineup. Uh, it's a 65 watt chip, so that makes it perfect for something like this in a mobile platform, but it's got all eight cores, all 16 threads, but it's, a, it's the full 3.7 turbo clock with the 3.1 gigahertz all core uh, turbo clock on here, 24 gigabytes of 2400 megahertz DDR4, and of course an RX 580 four gigabyte model. Now you can step up those specs a little bit. You can add more RAM up to 32 gigabytes. It's a, it's a pretty impressive package because when you draw a Venn diagram, when it comes to laptops, there's very little overlap if you're looking for something that's got price to performance, performance, and portability. You can easily get two of the three, but it's hard to get all three, where usually if you want performance, then with it you're also getting a little bit less portability because it might be bigger, heavier, bulkier. Uh, if you want performance, you're certainly not gonna get cheap. So it, it, it's hard to make that Venn diagram really line up, but I think they've done a pretty good job here with this particular model. Because the 1700, again, as I said, 65 watt chip, it's not too expensive. It's still got all eight cores, 16 threads. So it definitely churns and just obliterates your professional workflows. Now in terms of, of weight and form factor, it measures 1.3 inches high at its highest point. It's a 17.3 inch panel and it weighs in at seven pounds. So it's not the lightest laptop, but certainly not the heaviest by any means. But in terms of the panel tech, it is an IPS panel. So that's a plus, right? Oftentimes you'll see uh, high-end hardware go with a TN panel or something like that because of its higher refresh rate, but IPS tech has definitely moved along. So this has got an IPS 75 Hertz FreeSync panel built in. So you've definitely got all the stuff you would certainly want to go along with your, you know, your gaming and professional laptop. Now in terms of build quality, uh, there's a lot of plastic on here, but it doesn't feel rickety. It doesn't creak when you push on it. It's very little flex. It doesn't make noises. It doesn't feel cheap at all. But on the top of the laptop, it does have a brushed metal finish with these accents. So it's not in your face. It doesn't have all these colors and lights everywhere. It's, one of the, it's, it's basically a dual purpose laptop where if I still worked in my professional environment, I would have no problems taking this into a board meeting or a meeting. This looks elegant, but also can play your games and do all your work with no problems. Now, speaking of color, once you open it up, the speaker grills right here do have a little bit of red color accent to them. The keyboard is a red LED backlit it's not RGB, so you can't change the colors. You can, of course, turn the backlight off if you want. And you've got this red Asus logo right here and some white lettering that says Republic of Gamers. But it's not in your face and over the top and gaudy, so no problems with that. Also, too, and speaking of hinge quality, the hinge keeps its position. And the nice thing is it's weighted and balanced just enough to where if it's flat on the table, you can open it up without the base lifting up, right? You can see it kind of wanted to right there. Some laptops, the hinge is too tight. So when you go to pick it up and open the lid, the whole laptop folds back, but not in this case here. In terms of connectivity, we've got quite a bit going on here. We've got a full size ethernet port right here, but the cool thing is when you're not using it, it sort of flips up and out of the way. But if you want it, this little hinge pushes down, exposing the full opening of the ethernet port, full size HDMI, which is perfect for VR and your HMDs and your headsets because this is very VR ready. The plenty of horsepower to run your VR games, no problem. Of course, we've got a USB Type-C, another USB 3.0, and our headphone jack. Flipping around to the other side here, we have got a full-size, well, an SD card reader, so that's nice. And then we've got two USB ports right here, as well as a Kensington lock. So it's pretty standard in terms of connectivity but it's not lacking, which a lot of laptops, as they shrink them down, you start giving up some of this connectivity, but not in the case right here. Now let's talk about what everyone's gonna care about, gaming. Honestly, it games like any desktop with a 1700 in it and an RX 580. The RX 580, even the four gigabyte model, although I'd like to have seen an eight gig RX 580, has no problems pushing 1080p whatsoever, which is exactly what this panel is. The FreeSync definitely comes in handy because the RX 580 at 1080p, even with high settings on games like Rise of the Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, Prey, uh, GTA 5, 
all exceed 60 FPS by quite a bit. So the 75 Hertz FreeSync panel is definitely doing some work and the FreeSync is definitely smoothing out those frame rates. But in terms of noise, it wasn't very loud, it wasn't very intrusive. The fans do indeed ramp up, but most of the time when you're gaming anyway, especially with a laptop, you're probably wearing headphones anyway, because although the sound quality on this is very good, most people I know who game on laptops wear headphones anyway, so the noise isn't gonna to be too intrusive. Now in terms of heat, it all exhausts out the back of the laptop. You've got pretty ample ventilation right here. It goes right out the back. All you're gonna be doing is blowing heat at your neighbor. It's not your problem, it's theirs now. It pulls in from the bottom of the laptop. So you're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure that you're not blocking that off with your lap or something. You want it on a flat surface. But as I said, annoy your neighbor, not yourself. Blow the heat their way. Now in terms of battery performance, I mean, it's not terrible. It's a 65 watt TDP chip, at least the desktop version. I assume this one's the same because it's got all the same specs as the desktop version. RX 580 is not the most efficient GPU out there, but it's certainly more efficient than like a full-size desktop Vega. But you're gonna probably get a couple of hours of gaming out of this. Not the greatest gaming experience though, because on battery power, it really does pull back its core speeds and stuff. Unless you just leave it in performance mode, then it will just run balls to the wall until it goes into power save mode, where everything then ramps down to like its base clock and farther back. For instance, the CPU on battery power will go all the way back to 500 megahertz. So 0.5 gigs is what you're gonna get on battery power, but that's on, on the you know conservation mode when it's below 10%, because what it's trying to do at that point is give you enough time to save your work and shut down the system or plug it in without a critical shutdown that's just gonna lose your work. But you know, I think for most gamers though, they're not too concerned with battery power gaming because we're gonna plug it in anyway because we want all the FPS, right? What's the point of having a free sync panel if you're gonna be gaming on battery? But you could for a little while anyway. Now some final thoughts here in terms of pros and cons. It's, it was really hard for me to find anything I would change with this laptop. It really comes down to a couple of things. One, with the amount of cooling in here, the heat pipe design, the independent fans, it would've been nice to see at least some level of overclocking available to this, uh, like we see on some other laptop models because we know that the 1700 does overclock well without adding too much more voltage and too much more heat. I think we could have gotten this guy up to four gigs on, in a laptop without too much of an issue, or at least 3.7 with all cores, right? Because 3.7 is only one or two cores, 3.1 is the all core turbo clock. I think we could have got 3.7 on all cores. The RX 580, would have liked to have seen an eight gigabyte version be standard, but I understand the reasoning for having two different versions and giving a little bit of, of a cost, uh, you know, tier system here so that you can make it more affordable to more people. And definitely, definitely needs faster memory. 2400 megahertz, although not a slouch, we know that Ryzen's Infinity Fabric takes a direct performance impact on memory speed. So the faster memory you have, the faster the Infinity Fabric works, the better performance you're gonna get. So 3000 megahertz plus is the sweet spot and where you wanna aim for. At least giving us the ability to overclock the SODIMs a little bit to see if we can get there would have been nice but it's pretty locked down, so you can't really touch any of that. You can change the memory, but then you're buying memory that you're gonna change anyway, which kind of affects the cost of performance in the long run. But that's really all I got. I don't have a lot that I would really change with this. I mean, it, got, it has everything you want. Eight cores, 16 threads, putting it on par with something like the old 5960X from Intel in a laptop. Plenty of DDR, uh, four in here. Storage-wise, it's expandable. We've got a 256 gig SSD and a one terabyte hard drive which is what all the games and stuff are on here. Performance on gaming, more than enough for 1080p. 1080p IPS, free sync panel. I mean, what more can you ask for? If you guys have any comments, put them down in the comments below, obviously. I've been waiting to get my hands on this all year and it didn't disappoint. It's an amazing performer and the cost of performance on this is great. So check links down below. You guys can see links on where to buy and how to outfit it and all of that. But that's all I got. If you guys got any comments or suggestions for Asus or this laptop or what you guys would like to see moving forward, make sure you sound off down below. Subscribe if you guys are new around here. And as always, I will see you in the next one.